taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you enjoy the save, drop a like on the video, it really helps out the channel. Today I thought we'd start on Julian Burgess, uh, the guy that we brought in on the cheap from Fulham in the summer, loaned him out into League 2, and he's actually probably been our best performing loan player so far. 10 goals in 22 uh, for Chester, who are actually doing, well they were anyway, pretty well, oh okay, so they slipped off a little bit now, bad form. At one point they were top of the league and cruising. Uh, still in the playoff spot though, that would be pretty good for a team like Chester. Uh, Wimbledon though, struggling a little bit uh, in the league. Not, not good to see. Stockport however, having a relatively good season, which is really nice. We've got a youth preview, which I'm going to quickly show you now. Um, not the golden generation. To be fair, we got very, we've had two in a row, I think, and we had one before that with Costel Troffin. So to be fair, we can't really complain. That being said, it still said this is an excellent group of players coming through, which is a nice sign. But Santana doesn't join us until the 1st of January. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what impact he can have on that left side. Because we've been playing without Stepanek for the last three matches due to his suspension. And it's, it's noticeable the difference he makes. In my save, AI as Carlisle had a board takeover in League Two, pumped 45 million, bought their way to the Premier League and finished fifth. Did back to back promotions, was incredible see that i love seeing stuff like that does anyone else remember when oldham in my save were like a um like a european team they were a ridiculously good side i think they had massive money and they got to the premier league and had huge amounts of money and i think they were in europe quite often i think it was with wimbledon in that save we're just going to ignore the fact Suarez played for Dragon Force. He's going to drag your defence to glory through the fire and the flames. You're damn right. I saw it when I was editing and I was like, I hope someone's made that joke. And at least three of you did. I love how Regan Booty is a club legend. Yeah, I showed you that screen, so I thought you'd like that. Uh, it's nice to see that that's the case. I'm really struggling to know what to do with him at the moment because, like someone said, he isn't maybe as good as the stats would suggest because he gets a lot of those assists from corners and uh, corners and free kicks and stuff. So, the, and we're good at those set pieces, which obviously helps because of his delivery, but it might boost his numbers a little bit in the wrong way. And I'm concerned about what's going to happen when he starts to get like antsy about wanting to play more. I want to offer him a new deal, but his agent genuinely wants a hundred grand a week now. And it's like, that's just not going to happen. A lever on the left wing, rare, but not unheard of. Right, three games off camera, two massive ones today. And I just realized just how difficult our home start to the season has been. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. First up, though, a home to Arsenal. Pretty poor performance. Did well in the first half, but Crippen Diata gave them the lead in the 40, uh, 54th minute. Not the best defending from Celso. Um, he, it was a free kick, lumped in. Celso chested it, but sort of spun around and it ended up chesting into the path of Diata. So, don't know what happened there. Uh, Nicolas Pepe then got one in the 75th minute. Frustrating. But then Jean Carlos, what a mess this was. Diata got the ball on the right, drove towards the box, went past two or three players. There was this big melee in the corner by the post. Hits it, it sort of ricochets around a bit, eventually just falls straight to Jean Carlos, and it's in for 3-0. As usual against Arsenal, I feel like, from chance creation point of view, we were just as good as them. I just didn't have as many shots. We really do get the raw end of the stick in the games against Arsenal, but then we have such a great record against Spurs out of nowhere, so it kind of balances out. And then a relatively solid performance away at Newcastle. I think if there was a team that deserved to win this game, it was definitely us, but we could not quite get it over the line. And Pepo had one really good chance where he was put, put, put through wonderfully by Sonja Hansen. Clean through on goal, but he could not dispatch it. And I think had he done so, that would have wrapped up the win. But again, really good performance. 16 shots. Once again, 10 shots on target in an away game, just like against Wolves. And we somehow didn't manage to score a goal there either. Um, but at least we got a draw this time. And then it's Desmond time. Yep, that's the ninth one. <laughs> Still onto the exact same 17%. Or 17.6% of them, but there you go. Uh, yeah, took the lead very early. Lamjed Chitty with a lovely strike from the corner of the box. Just one of those, you know the one, like the one against Everton where they just ping them in the top corner. Nothing the keeper's going to do about that. But then straight from the kickoff, Harry Kane whipped a ball in and Alberto Marat was able to head one in off the post. Harry Kane played on the left wing in this game, which was bizarre. And then I thought we'd gone and won this match. Uh, we wouldn't have deserved it, but I thought we genuinely had. As Issa and Pepper was played through by David Ferguson, slotted at home for another goal for himself. So he's eighth in the league this season. He's still looking a bit quality, but then as always with the these situations, uh, Spurs found an immediate equaliser and a deserved one at that. Uh, it's Trevor Cavell, but it's another point taken off of Tottenham. Our record against them is outrageous, um, but another 2-2. That leaves us 10th still, 22 points on the board right about now, nine points above the drop zone. Um, coming up to the halfway stage, we're on for a run about the same points tally as last year, but I feel like there's something more to us this season. Also against Spurs, I actually played a more, I played the same style of play, but I tried an attacking midfielder in that game. And it seemed to actually work quite nicely with a slightly more long ball approach, playing for set pieces in against some of the bigger teams. It seemed to work quite well. But today we host Southampton, 11th place, directly below us in the league. This is one of those games, to be honest. A home game against Saints, not an easy one. I think we've got Everton away next after that. So it's certainly not going to be an easy one uh, by any stretch. But this is one of these games that I want to be earmarking as a potential winner. Uh, because the Burnley game was great, but against Bolton, uh, 
Brentford and Leicester, we just couldn't quite do it. Although Brentford, we probably did deserve it. Um, Southampton today is a game where we need to get our second home win of the season. It's essential. So that's obviously not what we want to play. It's still called the DM, but that's what I did, basically. The only change I've made is that I've made Hanson dribble more because um, he's really good at dribbling. And he seems to look... He looks better when I turned that on. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo like that. I still think I want to start Lever over Guajardo because he's just put in better performances. Like, his average rating is higher. Step next back, which is nice. We'll move these two over. I know it might be because of their footedness and whatnot, but that's fine. That's pretty much what I want there. Happy to continue with Mpepo at the moment because he's been putting some more goals in, and they're open play goals now. Like, he probably should have... I mean, he definitely should have had one against Newcastle as well. Um, I like him. I think next summer, maybe if we've got the money and the situations right, maybe shopping for a new striker might be a thing, or trying to revert back to Costel Troffin. I don't know, but I've got to go with Mpepo at the moment because he's putting the ball in the net, and he trains so well. Having Stepanek back should help. I can't wait to get Santana in on the left-hand side. Levers get... It's all coming together at the moment. Go on, get Stepanek on the ball. Good touch. Lovely touch. He's just going to drive straight at goal and have a shot here, isn't he? In he comes. And a good save by Posovec. But that's a really good start. Stepanek isn't really good. Oh, what a ball. And Pepo can't really do much with it from this angle. It's gone past one. Can he go past that? He actually is. Oh, well played. I mean, that's actually really well played. He's basically fashioned a chance out of nothing for himself there. Silla. Starting to get used to this role a bit more now. Lovely. Stepanek, great first touch. He's got to find someone. He doesn't have Pepo. Oh, oh, wait. Hang on. No. Oh, that should have been a goal. Oh, I feel like we might regret that later in the match. That was a big chance for him, Pepo, and he maybe could have got to the rebound. Although it does seem like they've actually removed the silly sliding tackle thing, though. So there is that. And I'm kind of glad that's gone. It was a bit ludicrous. Alberto. It's going to shoot, probably. Going for oh, Ferguson might find Stepanek. It's got an overlap. Chitiu. He might shoot himself here. Goes back for Ferguson. He's all the way through, and it's the side name. No. Could drop this off for Ferguson, who loves a long shot. Finds a lever. Can he cut inside another shot? Probably not. Silla. Stepanek and Ferguson. That's a bit too far out. But another very encouraging start to a game from us. But we need to get the goals when we're in these sort of positions here. And Pepo's in. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. We, we really should be in front now. Well, yet another excellent first half. We just can't seem to grab the goals when we're on top like this. The chance creation's right there. I don't really know what more we can do beyond that other than keep playing, keep creating the opportunities. Hopefully a goal will come. Oh, and Pepo nearly got it. Could still, though. Stepanek looks over the top. That's a beautiful pass. The keeper's out of his line. And Pepo, and it's a big save from the goalkeeper again. That's a tough one. Uh, all signs point to this being a really strong performance from us. But yet again, it's nil-nil. Just like it was against Wolves until the penalty. Just like it was against Newcastle, where we're playing fantastically well against these sides, for the most part. And just... Ca oh, no. And just for the most part, just cannot seem to get the, uh, the winning goal. Silla, nice work. Stepanek's into space. Griffiths does find him. He's got a man to take on, and he should be able to skin him. He's gone past him, and then Pepo, and it puts it on target again, but no dice. Honestly, I feel like maybe 15 minutes of Costel Troffin might not be the worst thing in the world here. It's been a really, once again, another fantastically strong performance that we just... Oh, great save from Suarez. He had to come up with that still. Just, oh, I just don't want another one of these matches where we play so well, and then don't go with... Oh, and Stepanek couldn't quite get it. Like, it's a really good sign to see us playing so well. We're just so close to doing the, doing the goods. Stepanek's in, and another big save from the goalkeeper. Kanguahara's taking it out of play. Griffiths again intercepting it. Troffin's in. Great save again by the goalkeeper. Oh my goodness me. Southampton are all over the place right now. We just cannot finish it. Great performance from the Southampton goalkeeper. To have 13 shots on target in a match again. Uh, well, not even again, but just to have 13 shots on target in a match and not score is just crazy for us. But it's not the first time this season. You know, Wolves, similar story. Newcastle, similar story. Stepanek again with a driving run. 20 seconds left. He's into the box, you know. He's going to shoot, isn't he? Ah, oh, deflects through. And that'll probably finish things off here. Unless we win it back again, which... Oh, my God. They look so dangerous. Williams. Great tackle. Silla. Guajardo. Go on, lad. Oh, no. Notts County nil. Southampton nil. I don't know what more I can really do from a tactical perspective. We're getting the opportunities. They're just not taking them today. And that is a real downside. We should have won that match. But that's life. Right then. We're back. Away at Everton today. Oh, God. That Southampton game frustrated me, man. It's. It feels like we're right there. There's something more. It's just not quite getting it. But nevertheless, we must push on. I'm tempted to actually go with the same lineup and actually try a positive approach where Everton today and just see what we're capable of. We can always switch to this if needs be. I don't think I really want to make any changes to the lineup, to be honest. Quite happy to go with the exact same setup, I think. Actually, you know what? No, I'm actually not happy to go with that. I'm going to start Troffin instead of Mpepo because I feel like he needs to learn a lesson about... I feel like a lot of chances fell to him. They weren't great. Some of them probably could have been put away, though, by a better striker. And I wonder if Troffin can actually just show me something. 
but it's a bit brave of us to try to play like this away from home at a really good side. So we'll see. I'm quite happy to switch things over to a more counter-attacking approach, particularly if we were to get in front. Then again, if we look like we're playing really well and go in front, then I'll stick to what we're doing. But I just want to see how we battle it out against Everton today. 4-4-2, um, Newcastle played a 4-4-2, and we were still excellent against them. So I think this new approach really does seem to create a decent number of chances. And, oh, wow. Whew. And Chichu actually does keep hold of it, amazingly. Back for Ferguson. Hansen. Silla. I feel like there's a long shot incoming, but they've actually not done it. Fair play. Everton's sticking very tight. How has Alberto got through there? Ferguson. Oh, Rockets one at Pickford. No go. That's a nice ball for Lever. Can he take his man? He's going to have a shot here. And he oh, Pickford was forced into a stop there by Darren Lee. That was nice. Really well played from the lad. And you'd certainly like to hope so anyway. Just in sheer quantity sometimes. Because it's not like they're all from range. Although today, admittedly, it has been a bit like that. Hansen again and Pickford stops it. I'll spread it. Use Stepanek. There we go. Got a bit of room now. Goes past one. Defenders getting out of the way here. Stepanek's in. Oh, and Pickford comes up big there for Everton. I really do like this system that we've got going with the attacking midfielder, though. He That does, for whatever reason, seems to have made us much more stable, even if he himself isn't always getting the best ratings. Alberto. I'd say we've been pretty good in that first half, in all honesty. A bit of tiredness creeping in because there was only one game, uh, one day in between off camera, so that might be a slight problem for us. Stepanek's not had the best day. But I feel like there's something here for us. What I would say, though, is that I've seen nothing from Costel Troffin in this match at all. I... I mean, as much as we've had a lot of draws lately, this is one of those ones I would definitely take. Away at fifth place Everton is a good point for us. Too many shots from range from us, really. And Pepo. Celso! Oh, God, he's... Oh, my God, Pickford actually saved that. My Lord. Oh, we should be in front there. And Pepo's balling again. And Pickford will come and claim that. We've really held our own here. A few too many long shots, but we've still created two really good chances. Chitiu, Ferguson, thinks one in. And Pepo, Silica could fancy this. Or he could go out wide. He's won it back again. Goes for Hansen instead. Ferguson. Please use the wide players. And a good ball for Alberto. Got to get it back for someone. Gajardo! And it tipped over by Pickford. I actually do wonder if going down the wings might not be the worst approach. Because we're just ignoring those players a little too much at times. Pickford. Oh god, he's played it straight to Guajardo. And what a ball from Guajardo. Ricky Griffith. That is an amazing ball. If he actually finishes this off. Oh my giddy aunt. Ricky Griffiths. He's doing it in the Premier League. That ball from Francisco Guajardo is world class. Because the only player I even saw was... Look at this. Ricky Griffiths isn't even in shot. And all of a sudden, I thought he was playing it to Impepo. He's actually found Ricky Griffiths with that ball. That is terrific football. We lead at Goodison Park. Griffiths slots us home. And I have to say, I think we deserve it. Incredible work. Beautiful ball from Guajardo. But the goal from Griffiths, a wonderful finish again. He got us the winner against West Ham. Surely he can't do it again. We're not going to suddenly drop it onto defensive and stuff. Because we saw how well that worked out against Brentford, unfortunately. It just invites pressure, like I'm always saying. Guajardo. Oh, good first touch. Now, Berto's doing it here. Can he find the ball across the pitch? He doesn't need to because Hansen's there. Griffiths. He's got round his man. He's in again. Griffiths! Great save by Jordan Pickford. I mean, the chances have been coming for us in this second period since we switched to the wide areas. To pull off the result we're pulling off against the team as good as they are really shows a lot for me. I just don't want to... Con okay, well, there you go. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> second phase of a corner. Ah, uh, dear. Hmm. It just... I don't know. They just, they go in so easily. The goalkeepers are normally so vibrant, but for some reason, they just seem to be so bad from these situations. And away at a really good side to be pulling that kind of performance off. I think we deserve that lead, and I think we would have deserved the win, but that's life, isn't it? We seem to score so few of those ourselves. That's what makes it worse, I think. Because for whatever reason, we're not creating those same set-piece situations. I don't know how, but we're not. Oh, and Pickford's there. So they generally speak, we have scored a couple of them, but I don't know how to engineer those chances. And as a result, we are conceding far more of them than we're actually scoring ourselves. And that makes it annoying to me. Uh, James, guys, can you maybe go and do a bit of defending at all? Games past one. Blocked. Brilliant work. Oh, dear. Well, regardless of the late goal, I'm still incredibly ecstatic with the performance levels once again. A decent number of shots. We're hitting the target. We're hitting chances. We're doing everything right, as far as I can see. Right now, we're just lacking a tiny little bit of finishing. And then we could be seriously something at the moment. I'm going to be honest, once again, I find myself gutted about a result because I think we deserved more from that match, but that is life. Um, it's hard not to be frustrated by the second phase of free kicks and corners goals because, like I said, so rarely do we create the opportunity to score them ourselves for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's obviously just the way that our setup, but I don't know how to create those chances. And as a result, we're conceding an ungodly amount of them because that just seems to be the way the AI teams do corners. Frustrating. Um, 
Ricky Griffiths, I thought, had given us a, what would have, I feel like, been a deserved win. But that's another point, I guess. We've actually drawn our last four in a row and find ourselves now down in 13th. Still eight points above the drop zone, which is all well and good. It's just frustrating because we could have been up as high as ninth at the moment and really right in that battle. And But I'm, there's a lot of positives about the way we're playing. I feel like we're not being outclassed anymore in any area. We're creating a lot of chances, a lot of shots in matches, just in general. And I think that hopefully... In theory, the luck will turn in our favour and we'll start to put some of these away and not concede so much. That's the plan anyway. And hopefully once Santana joins us, we can really take it up a notch. And that's the plan for the next episode. So we'll do Blackpool, Burnley, Crystal Palace off camera. Come back for Aston Villa and Southampton. Um, a nice run of matches for us. Five games that I would consider all to be potentially winnable. If we can grab a couple of wins out of this, I think that would really ease the burden. Win away at Blackpool, get the confidence back. Beat Burnley, who are struggling. And then we've got Palace at home as well. And then Villa at home. All winnable matches. And then a revenge match against Southampton, hopefully. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like, that'd be glorious. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be amazing as well. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.